In today's video, I will be statistically finding out and proving which weapon type in Deep Woken is the best. Before we actually begin comparing, we need to discuss each weapon type. At first glance, the playstyles for each weapon seem easy enough to figure out. Heavy trades swing speed for high damaging strikes, which incentivizes a slower defensive playstyle in which you focus on baiting out hits and counterattack. Light seems like it would focus on quantity of hits over quality with low damage and high swing speed, which allows you to spam attacks to get as much damage as possible. And medium seems like it would be the most versatile, with medium amounts of damage and medium amounts of swing speed, which which would be a nice safe option in between heavy and light if you don't want to commit to either extremes. However, in reality, light and medium are just spamming M1 and never fainting, while heavy users are baiting out swings and delaying their swings to get a few cheap hits, unless they're hyper armor abusing to land their hits in a sacred field and just out DPS you. Because you know, being a good game developer is hard. <laughs> now that we've gone through each weapon category, we need to explore their subcategories, and starting with heavy, you have three options for weaponry. Blunt heavies or war hammers such as pale more and Petra's Anchor. These are easily the best of the three types of heavies, as Petra's Anchor, the most common heavy weapon, is the most common heavy weapon for a reason. And no, it isn't May Guilty Gear. Well, kinda. The next type of heavy weapon is Greatswords. Crit Blade is the most common that people think about when they mention Greatswords, and they really aren't that good anymore. Back when Destructive Recovery was broken, these were really strong and they were absolutely the best heavy, but now they're just kinda mid. And finally, Great Axes, most prominently be the Enforcer's Axe or Grand Sudoruska. Same as Great Swords, except without the end lag, so they're just a little bit better than Great Swords, so they're not really worth mentioning that much. Next would be Medium. Medium has three weapon types right now, starting with the most popular and likely the best, Swords. Swords like the Kier's Blade are exactly what I'm talking about when I was talking about medium damage and medium speed in a weapon. Oh, except I'm not, because this does enough damage to be near comparable to a heavy weapon, and it's fast enough to wear it out swing some of the slower light weapons like the Tonto sometimes. Fuck you if you use this. Regardless, swords are the best weapon within the medium category, because the next one is spears. Nobody uses spears. <laughs> they have spears that, you know, exist, but there are no spears that really rival endgame swords in terms of DPS, and without enough range to really make a difference in a fight, none of it really matters. The entire point of spears existing is that they would outrange and have a poke style of play with, you know, medium weapons. But the range doesn't matter because it's not enough to make them worth using when you're doing no damage. So up next and finally, rifles. At one point these were absolutely broken. I made a video on it a while back, however after the fix, it was just a nerf. The rifles are never really used and are almost completely non-viable, leaving swords as the only option for medium users to make a PvP competitively viable build. So, swords are obviously going to be the best. And finally, up to light weapons. Daggers are what most non deep Woken players imagine when they think of light weapons. They're fast, do a decent amount of chip damage, and everyone who uses them spams M1 and runs in a circle around you, being annoying. Krulian Dagger and Nemen Sickle are very common, as they specialize in being annoying. This isn't a stereotypes video, but if I had to generalize these fucking retards, I would say they're toxic little fatherless bastards, and even though I don't play the game, I still get DMs on Discord from you little monkeys who use Dagger, DMing me saying you want to 1v1 me in a game I don't play. I will murder you in real life. Anyways, back to the video. Daggers are good. They have high swing speed, and their damage is comparable to the lower side of medium weapons, making them actually pretty high and deep. DPS total. The next weapon, guns. Guns are what most actual Deep Woken players think of when they think light weapons. Just kidding, nobody uses guns, like literally nobody. And guns also have their own stupid subcategories within the subcategory of guns, also known as the sub subcategory of guns. Revolvers and Dragoons. Revolvers shoot decently fast and deal mediocre damage. Dragoons shoot very slow, have a ton of end lag, and do good damage. Pick your poison, they're both terrible. And finally, fists, which are actually what actual Deep Woken players think of when they think light weapons. And do you want to know why? Because there are so many fist users. Like, actually, there are so, so thousands, thousands of them. I see. I see 20 of them a day. But, once again, we have more sub-subcategories. Way of Neve, Just Karita, and Legion Kata. And we also have a sub-sub-subcategory called Willpower, which is the light's final toll. 
So let's run through these real fast. Just Karita is just garbage. You can't upgrade its damage since it has no Cestus equivalent. It's decently fast, but still not worth using. And you can't use Enchants because there's no Cestus equivalent. Legion Kata used to be meta, but since the grab move can somehow be blocked, you know how like grabs counter blocks in every video game ever, but also in real life, like it's a common technique in fighting and certain styles of MMA. Yeah, they nerfed that by removing it and now it's bad. And finally, Way of Neve, which is is the meta fist style. The crit always guard breaks and you can use Cestus with it. You know how uh, blocking, right, got countered by Legion Kata? Well, guess what? They're going to completely remove that, but then they're gonna add Way of Neve, which also fully counters grabbing with its crit. So, you know, cool game. As a whole, Way of Neve is decently strong and you can use it with any playstyle. It's also really good because all of the builds with Way of Neve, and if, especially if you're using the Neve and Warchief armor, have really high penetration stat. And if you do have Million Ton Piercer, I've gotten just casually builds with like 80% pen without even really trying to go super high on pen. So, Way of Neve is really good, and as a whole it's decently strong, and yeah, it's just always worth using. And Light's Final Toll, which is currently meta as it scales off the most popular stat in the game, has weird animations that make it hard to parry, just fists are the best light weapon and Way of Neve is the best style, and Way of Neve with Light's Final Toll and a flame build is really good. What I do want to say though is that a lot of people keep blaming the weird animations of Light's Final Toll on the fact that it, like, the lamp moves everywhere. How about you stop looking at the lamp and start looking at the person? Because for all of you who didn't, and a lot of you still don't know this, the animations are the same. The lamp just moves with it now. So if you look at the person instead of the lamp, you can see. You can see the animations. You can see when the hit's about to hit. You want to know why? Because the player animations don't change. Great tip for you. Anyway, now we need to compare the three best of each category. Fists for light, which is Way of Neve with the light's final toll. Swords for medium. And Petra's Anchor, because it's literally the only viable heavy weapon. Other than Hive Lord's Hubris, but I'm not going to even talk about that. Straight off, Petra's Anchor, despite being alright, is majorly outclassed by Fists and Swords. The damage incentive isn't worth the swing speed difference, because when you really look into it, Petra's Anchor only does about 2-5% to more per hit on a person than the Kira's Blade, which is the best sword in the game right now. And the damage incentive it offers isn't worth the increased effort you need to input in order to use this weapon most effectively. That leaves us with the Kier's Blade sword versus Fists. And after doing a poll in the Deepwoken Trading Hub server, which I own, the decision is clear. Medium weapons are absolutely the best in Deepwoken. I'm assuming most of you already knew this, but whatever, let's run it down. Medium weapons outclass Fists in terms of range and damage with comparable swing speeds. Even though Fists have good talents like Fists of Fortitude, it isn't enough to outclass the DPS of medium weapons, which is why they just have to be the best. When the only difference between these two weapons is like, two talents versus higher DPS, the higher DPS is going to win, which is why medium weapons and the Kier's Blade are the best in the game right now. If you disagree, I don't fucking care, and I know a lot of people are gonna leave comments about it, but I'm right, you're wrong. You wanna know why I'm right? Because I have more subs than you. <laughs> and I have more money than you. I'm the richest Deepwoken YouTuber. I'm not trying to flex, but my net worth is currently $58.3 million. Uh, generational oil is all I'm going to say. Regardless, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you get the satire. You know, the satire, the thing I'm making in all of these jokes that sound really dumb and make me sound like an asshole? Satire. Yep, that's what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed, and, uh... Uh, I'll be streaming next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'll be judging your bedrooms and PC setups, because you guys are disgusting. So if you want to, join my Discord and submit one of those. Hope you all have a great day, and goodbye.